Hey everybody, it's Andy Rosak with Child Care Aware of America. I'm here in Kokomo, Indiana, where exactly one year ago today, there were some devastating tornadoes. Our special coverage continues tonight of the tornado outbreak in central Indiana. And this scene is one of the first that emerged tonight from Kokomo. The tornado touchdown, plowing through a parking lot and taking out a freestanding Starbucks coffee shop. Oh my God, Starbucks just got blown over. There's people in there. It's one year later. The Starbucks is still not open, but it's been rebuilt. And we're here in Kokomo, Indiana today on the one year anniversary of the tornadoes to talk with child care providers, hear their stories, hear their lessons learned, and be better prepared. Hi, my name is Jill. I've been a child care provider since high school. I worked at a brief time in a center and now I open my home to all the little friends that I call, my favorite people in the world. I have a CDA, I'm a level four pass to quality, nationally accredited with National Association of Family Child Care Provider. We weren't expecting a tornado in August because that's not typically a month that we have tornadoes and that day they predicted storms. We thought they were far away. It was at nap time when the second storm hit. It was on August 24th. I saw a friend of mine drive by my window and he slammed on his brakes and he backed up and he pulled in my driveway almost like it was a NASCAR pit. And he said, the tornado is right there in that field. We sounded the alarm, we got the kids downstairs to the basement, and we sat down on the floor and we sang songs. And after about the third round of Itsy Bitsy Spider, we stopped singing about the rain. And when we could no longer hear any noise upstairs, my husband came upstairs and my daughter came upstairs and my friend came upstairs. And I stayed down with the kids and they looked around and they saw that the houses were still standing. We came upstairs, all the kids. I immediately started posting to Facebook, we are okay, we are safe, we are okay, we are safe. The kids are safe because there was no cell service. Um, sometimes we could get a text out, sometimes we could get a text in. The only way I knew to keep in contact was through Facebook and Twitter and that was the only way the parents could get a hold, I think just because the way the signals run. I had had a rough couple of minutes. <laughs> so we sat in the middle of the floor the cots were still all laid out and I got a big box of cookies and we sat and we had cookies on the floor in the middle after the tornado and now the kids think every time it storms we need cookies which you know <laughs> if that's what they remember from that day they could have a lot worse memories um, I had parents that picked up and just held me because I had a mom that lost everything mm. had they been home you know, they had trees go through their house. Um, and they weren't allowed to go back into their home to live for probably four months. It was, it was really scary. I could hear the wind starting to pick up. And the, the power went out. The roof went off. I said to myself, if this is my last moment, make it. You know, don't make it very, very painful or anything like that. That man says he's okay. He was not hurt, even though his house was just leveled by that storm. He says today he'll be cleaning up and starting to deal with insurance, as will many people here in Kokomo. I have other people's babies. I have other people's lives. This is their heart on my floor. What do I do with this? What would I do if it was my child? in somebody else's house, what would I want them to do? So it, it, when, I, when, we, when we made it that day, we got to the bottom of the stairs and we just started singing songs because that's kind of, group activities is, is how we kind of transition from one to the other. And our routines really, really helped that day. 
we typically, when the thunder crashes, we clap and we dance around and we make light of the situation, pretending as if it's almost a drum. When the lightning crashes and there's a huge flash of light, we smile at the ceiling like it's a picture being taken. We try to make scary situations feel like they're normalized by adding activities the kids normally do. And every kid gets their picture taken 35 times a day, at least. So they know when that camera flash goes. They, they know what to do. They know they sit there and smile. So when you're in my daycare and a storm comes through and lightning flashes and all the kids look at the ceiling and smile instead of screaming and crying because there's a loud noise, it really makes an impact on their reactions. I started doing the fire drills after the first tornado because I thought, how can I get all of these kids outside quickly? I mean, we do fire drills once a month. As a licensed provider, that's what we do. That's not enough for, for a two-year-old. They forget what happens from one day to the next, sometimes from one hour to the next. They're, they're supposed to drop their toys. Huh? We do it three or four times a day. Um, it's just routine for them. They know that they get their toy back after the... They don't even... We don't call it a fire drill. It's just that's the beepy noise. You know that. When the beepy noise happen, that's what you do. Um, and I encourage parents to do the same thing at home. We make plans to be trapped in our basement at all times. Right now I have an axe downstairs, I have food, water, blankets, I have medical supplies, I have Tylenol because in that stressful situation I have antacids. Mm -hmm. I have um, a couple cots and a pack and play. You need a safe place for the kids to be. First and foremost, I have a super gate and a, and a pack and play downstairs. You know, for my babies, at that point in time, it does not matter if they share a pack and play. It matters that they are in one spot and they're safe. And you can move that around if you need to. I mean, if you take a tote and dump it in the middle of the floor and put a super gate around it, these kids are in heaven. Because they don't ever, that's just a treat for them. So I would definitely say someplace to contain the kids, diapers, water, snacks, emergency phone numbers, maybe an old cell phone, because you can make an emergency call with a phone that does not have service. Um, I would try to maybe keep a battery charger, just a cheap little solar battery charger you leave in your window at all times. You can charge your phone with that if power's out. Um, generators are awesome, but they're expensive. Um, these kids are my family. You know, th it might be Miss Jill's house, but this is where they feel at home. This is where they spend most of their waking hours. Preparedness is important to me because I have the best job in the world and I take care of the future every single day.